CASBs are becoming increasingly important and increasingly affordable as an element of your security posture. Let's take a look at what CASB is and what it can do for you and some different ways that you can deploy CASB. Hi, I'm Steve Murphy. I'm a vice president at ARG and while I work for ARG, this video is my own and isn't necessarily a reflection of the views or opinions of my employer. This channel is all about helping IT leaders make great business decisions. So let's take a look at what a CASB can do. Quick outline of our conversation today. We're going to explore what a CASB is. There's a traditional definition of a CASB, and then there's my definition of a CASB. So we'll look at both. We'll look at two different deployment models for a CASB, look and evaluate some of the pros and cons. And then we'll talk about why adoption of CASBs has lagged and what's changed to increase the level of adoption and certainly the level of conversations that we're seeing in the marketplace. First and foremost, what is a CASB or CASB? CASB stands for Cloud Application Security Broker. And the traditional definition of a Cloud Application Security Broker is an application that sits between your users and the cloud applications that they want to access to enforce policy. Now, traditional Cloud Access Security Brokers have a couple of components. Authentication and authorization of users, credential mapping for data within the cloud, device profiling so they can determine the context of that device, encryption of data, logging of activities, and alerting when things don't appear normal. Now, I don't like this definition because a lot of people, when they read this definition, are going to say, I do all that stuff already with the things that I already have, the tooling that's already in place. Why do I need a CASB? So I prefer more of a functional definition. CASBs protect the organization from exposure of unauthorized information in cloud environments. It allows people to access those cloud environments, but it controls what can be done within those cloud environments. And so it's a very unique application that the traditional definition really doesn't convey. To that end, a CASB prevents or limits users from unauthorized cloud services. And so this means that you can control shadow IT by preventing your users from accessing unapproved or unsanctioned cloud applications. One of the great things that CASBs do or provide is a risk score for thousands of different cloud environments. And this allows you to customize your approach to every significant cloud environment that you allow your users to access. CASBs also contextualize, as I mentioned previously, the end user and adjust the rules or the governance for those users on the fly. So if someone is using their laptop from a uh, unsecured Wi-Fi, for example, that CASB will recognize that and, and reduce potentially the rules that or the, um, the allowances that that user has to access data. Once they recognize that the user is back at their normal IP address, those rules may be relaxed. It also provides for compliance purposes a record of cloud interactions. Now this helps you understand who's accessing what data and for what purposes. And then there's a threat protection element to ensure that only the appropriate users are using the cloud services and it understands when unusual activity is being, uh, is being conducted. So it, it does have a user and entity behavior analytics component to a CASB that allows you to block unusual activity. There are two deployment models that you'll have to evaluate when you consider a CASB. Let's take a look at the proxy-based de deployment model, as that's the more historical or the legacy deployment model, the one that the industry was founded on. So we have the internet, and we have a user who wants to access a cloud environment over the internet. Let's say it's either Salesforce or Microsoft Office 365. That user, in a traditional CASB model would access the CASB platform first. Generally, that's going to be in the cloud today. In the past, it might have been an on-prem CASB, but most of the deployments today are in the cloud. So the user is going to access a cloud-based CASB, and that CASB will act as a proxy to allow a session into both of these cloud environments. That proxy service allows the CASB to monitor the traffic in real time as it goes back and forth between those cloud environments and enforce the, the rules and policies that the organization has put in place. Well, the big drawback of a proxy-based model is that 
you have an application sitting between you and the environment that the end user is trying to access. That can cause delays and experience issues. So to address the delays in the traditional model, the industry's developed an API-based CASB. Now, we still have our internet uh, cloud and our user trying to access these, um, these cloud environments, but the CASBs here actually sit in line with the cloud environments as an API functionality. So the user's accessing the cloud environment directly with just a pass-through through the API or through the CASB's API. Now, when uh, suspicious traffic happens or, sus or um, something that needs further analysis happens, those CASB APIs will signal back to the production-based platform, the CASB platform. And the challenge here is that this is not in real time. This might take a few seconds for a, an analysis to occur and determine whether or not the traffic is allowable. So this doesn't have the same security level, the real-time security level, as a proxy-based CASB. But the end user experience is superior. Now, one of the alternatives, if you use a CASB that offers both models, and you can use both models uh, selectively within your environment, you might choose the standard business cloud environments as an API model and use the more consumer-based cloud environments, let's say a Dropbox account or Gmail account and so forth, within a proxy service where the customer experience impact may not be as noticeable and the risk associated with those cloud environments is higher and you want that real-time inspection. So that may be one way that you can determine how to incorporate CASBs into your organization, getting the best of both deployment models. So on this next slide, a little tongue in cheek, I think CASBs are one of the funner cybersecurity platforms that an organization can consider. And what do I mean by fun? Well, first of all, non-technical people understand CASBs. So it's easier to explain a CASB to your management team, for example, and get that funding or the project approved than it might be to explain another cybersecurity solution, like a secure web gateway or, or uh, remote browser services and so forth. CASBs have a real and understandable benefit in terms of preventing people from uploading inappropriate information into public cloud services. It's also one of the more interactive platforms from a cybersecurity perspective. You'll be constantly adjusting your CASB for various situations. Now, some people might call this work, and it is work to a degree, but it also allows you to continue to, to freshen your CASB rule set, your policies, and make sure that they're appropriately addressing the needs of the organization rather than a set it and forget it type of environment. And one of the reasons why you're gonna interact with the CASB so much is that you'll be driving interaction with, uh, with the business. IT will be working with the business uh, users to determine what's the appropriate access level for various applications. You'll help identify friction within the IT environment because people will wanna do things that the CASB won't let them do and then you'll help them evaluate whether or not there's a, an appropriate way of getting that goal accomplished or whether or not you need to make an adjustment within the CASB to allow that type of service. So in this regard, IT becomes a problem solver. And I've already mentioned that a CASB can prevent shadow IT by preventing organizations and end users from instituting new cloud services without IT being involved. So with all these benefits, why haven't CASBs really caught on? Well, my humble opinion, the real issue with a CASB is historically they've been extremely expensive, something that only the largest organizations could afford. Now, COVID is changing the understanding of the value proposition of CASBs. So the cost structure is becoming more rationalized because of so many people working from home outside of the traditional cybersecurity environment. And, if, and you can understand the cost structure or the, the reason for the high cost for CASB if you understand what they do. There's a ton of real-time development that happens within CASBs um, on an ongoing basis just to keep up with the thousands of cloud applications that they support. But that doesn't mean that cost has to be an inhibitor. There are individual CASB solutions that do not provide all of the feature functionality of the top tier performers or the top rated uh, CASB platforms in the industry. 
And also the individual CASB providers generally have a sliding scale or menu driven service where you can pick the technology that fits your business. So understanding your, your use cases can help you lower your cost structure significantly. And as I said, there are affordable alternatives. There are new market entrants coming into the CASB environment from other services like the secure web gateway providers, for example, that have different models. If you're interested in CASB and want to continue this conversation, feel free to reach out to me. My contact information is in the description of this video. And if you got some value from this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. Thanks very much for doing that in advance. That helps other people access this content. And if you want to find your way back to this channel, the best way of doing that is by hitting that subscribe button. That will put my video in your feed and you can come back at your convenience. Thanks very much for your time and I hope you have a great day.